Today is Monday, May 16th, 2022. This is the rescheduled regular meeting of the Board of Education. We're going to start our evening with a silent prayer. Dr. Ruffman, do you have any remembrances today? Yes, President Sweeney. In our moment of silence this evening, let us remember former members of the Waterbury Public Schools Education Community who have passed away. Margaret Lombardi, former chemistry teacher at Crosby, passed away on April 27th. Virginia Pierpont, former kindergarten teacher at Russell School, passed away on May 3rd. Antoinette Rinaldi, former teacher at Chase, Washington, and Driggs Elementary, passed away on May 4th. Susan DeJoya, paraprofessional at Driggs Elementary School. William Monaghan, retired principal at Sprague Elementary School. Moment of silence, please. Okay. Next item on our agenda is the Pledge of Allegiance to the Flag. Commissioner Brown, would you lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance, please? I pledge allegiance the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Commissioner Brown? Here. Vice President Hernandez? Here. Commissioner Ireland? Here. Commissioner Nardozzi? Here. Commissioner O'Brien? Here. Here. Commissioner Pagano? Present. Commissioner Van Stone? Present. President Sweeney? Here. President, um, Commissioner Pagano is joining us virtually tonight. Um, we have an ad to the agenda tonight. Yeah. Vice President Hernandez. I motion to add to the agenda item number 14.5, Nellie Mae Grant. Second. Motion's been made and seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Motion carries. And I apologize uh, since we have Commissioner Progano um, joining virtually tonight per our board um, our board laws, uh, we will do a roll call vote for all votes tonight. Okay, thank you. Presentation? Okay. Okay. Item number four communications. Copy of communications dated April 13th, 2022 from Civil Service offering Shermaine Rivera the position of food service worker and certifying Justin Gladding for the position of maintainer one. Copy of communication dated April 19th, 2022 from Civil Service offering Asma Farouk the position of food service worker. Copy of communications dated April 21st, 2022 from Civil Service offering Yvette Campos the position of food service worker and certifying Yunz Hatan for the position of painter foreman. Email communication dated April 25th, 2022 from Tim Moynihan regarding misleading labels on pieces of legislation. Email communication dated April 26, 2022 from Robert Goodrich regarding attacking of student and ARP funding. Email communication dated April 26, 2022 from Katie Nunez regarding public hearing request. Email communication dated April 29, 2022 from CABE regarding policy highlights. Copy of communication dated April 22nd, 2022 from Civil Service certifying Darren Brown for the position of maintainer one. 
copy of communications dated April 26, 2022 from Civil Service certifying Kimberly Dunn for the position of Administrative Associate One and offering Sarah Bajit Carr the position of Food Service Worker. Copy of communication dated April 29, 2022 from Civil Service certifying Donald Jacques for the position of Maintainer One. Okay, and a um, motion from um, Commissioner Nardozzi. A motion to receive and place on file the communications as listed. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Recording aye. in progress. Aye. Yep. Brown? Yes. Vice President Hernandez? Yes. Commissioner Ireland? Yes. Yes. Commissioner Orso? Yes. Commissioner Pagano? Yes. Commissioner Serrano Zorno? Yes. Commissioner Van Stone? Yes. President Sweeney? Yes. Motion carries. Approval of minutes. Secretary Serrano Adorno? Make a motion to approve the minutes as listed. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. Any discussion? Roll call. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Vice President Hernandez? Yes. Commissioner Ireland? Yes. Commissioner Nardozzi? Yes. Commissioner O'Brien? Yes. Commissioner Orso? Yes. Commissioner Pagano? Yes. Commissioner Brown Yes. Commissioner Van Stone? Yes. President Sweeney? Yes. Excuse me. Okay. Item number six, Cape Leadership Award Presentation. And Commissioner um, Brown, would you give us some background on this yes. as in your role as president of CABE? Thank you very much. Good evening, everyone. It's my absolute pleasure to welcome our outstanding students in the Waterbury Public Schools to receive this honor from the Connecticut Association of Boards of Education. And the criteria that you've been selected is very, very uh, important. It's willingness to take on challenges capability to make difficult decisions, concern for others, ability to work with others, willingness to commit to a project, diplomacy, ability to understand issues clearly, and ability to honor a commitment. And these are outstanding qualities that you have demonstrated and been recognized uh, by your peers and by uh, your leadership of your school. So congratulations. and. Uh, the administrators can start giving the awards. Thank you very much. Good evening, everyone. And again, I'd like to congratulate all the students who are receiving CABE awards this evening. And they do have representatives from their school who are here with them. I'd like to first call up the principal of Crosby High School, Michael Verano, and his two students who have receive the CABE Award this evening are Amina Mukarter and Alex Aquino Rivera. Good evening, uh, President Sweeney, Vice President Hernandez, uh, Dr. Ruffin and Commissioners of the Board of Education, uh, the recipients of the 2022 CABE Leadership Award for Crosby High School are Amina Mutar and Alex Aquino Rivera. Amino is a leader by example at Crosby High School. Uh, she is a leader amongst her peers and has already been the recipient of various scholarships, including uh, the Memorial, uh, the Rivera Memorial Scholarship and the Connecticut Junior Republic Scholarship. She has aspirations to attend Quinnipiac University in the fall. Alex Aquino Rivera, who I like to call the mayor of Crosby High School, <laughs> I may be the principal, but Alex is the mayor of Crosby, always lends a helping hand uh, to anyone he can within the building. Uh, he's a role model for all underclassmen, and he <coughs> has aspirations to become a corrections officer in the future. Both of these students are exemplary young adults, and we at Crosby are extremely proud to have them uh, as recipients of the 2022 CABE Leadership Awards. Thank you.
Congratulations again. The next school presenting this evening is Duggan School. And representing their school, they have the principal, Melissa DiGiovanni, and her assistant principal, Carla Fadanza, presenting awards to Aaliyah St. Hilaire and Melody Hinaro. Good evening. I would like to start with our eighth grade recipient, Aaliyah St. Hilaire. What does it take to be a leader? A true leader is someone who faces challenges, overcomes setbacks, motivates, and cares for others, and who follows through with her commitments. There is no greater example of an eighth grade leader at Duggan School than Aaliyah St. Hilaire. Aaliyah serves as an ideal example of the leadership vision that we all wish to achieve. Her warm and caring personality is incredibly unique and mature for her age. She advocates not only for herself, but for those around her. Aaliyah is such a kind soul and she strives to make sure that those around her are successful in all that they do. She commits to anything she sets her mind to and despite the occasional setback, she always rises above the struggle to succeed in the end. Aaliyah St. Hilaire is an eighth grade student that is extremely deserving of this award. Congratulations, Aaliyah. Good evening. Melody has always been a leader within her classroom and grade. As a seventh grader, Melody has now become a leader within the school. Melody is someone that students as well as staff turn to when issues arise. She has the ability to help students reach understanding. She connects with her fellow classmates and acts as a bridge between people. Melody is always willing to lend a helping hand. She is the type of student that goes out of her way to help students and make them feel comfortable. She has genuine concern for others as well as the greater community. Melody is the type of student that takes incentive. She goes above and beyond what is asked. She is of high moral character. Melody is a girl who embodies everything that makes a student leader. Congratulations, Melody. Congratulations to the students at Duggan. The next school this evening is North End Middle School. And representing the school, we have Principal Jackie Gilmore, Assistant Principal Jim Simpson, and teachers from North End Middle School, Kelly Munoz and Tiffany Rosa. Good evening, Dr. Ruffin and Board Commissioners. I'm here to talk about Rebecca. She's a seventh grade student at North End Middle School. She is a highly motivated student. She's an enthusiastic learner and consistently shows persistence with every task she's given. Rebecca is able to communicate her understandings in each of her classes, um, especially in her math class, and provides very insightful additions to our discussions and our discourse. Rebecca has unlimited academic potential that we all see and we are confident she is successful in everything she sets her mind to. Uh, Rebecca's respect for others and her ability to meet expectations makes her a model citizen for both her classmates and her teachers. Uh, toward her peers, she is accepting and very kind-hearted, and she wants to help others achieve their best while continuing to support her own growth. Congratulations, Rebecca. I'm here representing um, our eighth grader, Delicia Williams. Uh, Delicia is an outstanding student, both in and out of the classroom. It is very evident in her every day-to-day -day interaction that she loves North End and being at school. 
She's respectful to both adults and her peers alike, displaying maturity and integrity beyond her years. At North End, she frequently leads school announcements and activities. She works collaboratively with her peers in group activities and to complete assignments. Delicia also participates in the 21st Century After School program, where she is a wonderful role model to the younger students. Delicia has a very bright future ahead of her, and we are all very proud of her accomplishments here at North End. Congratulations. I also wanted to add that North End Middle School did have their assistant principal, Jennifer Egan, present, and also I noticed a teacher in the audience, Jen Rosa. So they did bring a, a team around to support their students this evening. Next up is Kennedy High School, and the principal, Robert Johnston, is here this evening with Ashley Mutino to honor two students from Kennedy, Derek Letty and Sophia Silva Rosa. Good evening, everyone. I'm going to turn things over to Ms. Moutinho, who was uh, in our school counseling office and instrumental in identifying uh, this year's nominees from Kennedy. Uh, Derek is unable to be with us. He's playing with the Kennedy baseball team. They <laughs> probably just finished playing down in Oxford. He couldn't get back in time. Hello. Thank you. So I'm going to start with Derek. As Mr. Johnson said, part of the reason we chose him is because he is so dedicated <laughs> to the baseball team and to everything he does. Um, he's an upstanding student who's able to lead his peers academically and athletically. He's the quarterback of our football team. He's only a junior, and he was the quarterback. He's a captain. At any time during a game or in practice, you can hear his voice clear across the field, uh, cheering his team on, offering them support if they're not doing so well. On top of football, he also manages our girls' basketball team and plays baseball. In school, he's one of those students that other students look to. Uh, my favorite quality in Derek is He's never afraid to advocate for himself or to ask for help, which I think is one of the things that I try to instill in my students the most is to advocate for themselves, and he so embodies all of that. To my right, we have Sophia Silva Rosa. She's taken on quite a leadership role this year specifically. She moved to the United States from Brazil in middle school. She's become what I refer to as the Brazilian ambassador of Kennedy High School. She knows when a new student from Brazil is coming in before I do, probably even before Mr. Johnston does at this point. Um, she meets with them. I think there's a group chat that she has. If a student has questions, she is always willing to, to help them. If you go into the cafeteria during breakfast or during, during lunch, you can see them all sitting together. She's willing to offer academic help, help them with translation if need be. It's, a couple of times it's happened where we've called students down and Sophia, like a minute later, walks into our offices already knowing we need translation help. Um, she's shown such maturity this year. I've watched her over the last two years, three years really. Um, and thankfully, both these students are juniors, so I have one more year with them because I don't want to think about this time next year, but I'm very excited to see what they both do over the next year and a half. <laughs> Thank you. Congratulations. And the next school presenting this evening is Waterbury Arts Magnet School. And the principal, Nicholas Albini, is here to honor four students, Alicia De La Rosa, Aisha Atemi, Marcella Young, and Michael Jarjura.
Well, I need four, but we'll take three for now. You're coming. Uh, <laughs> President Sweeney, Vice President Juanita Hernandez, uh, uh, Board of Commissioners, Dr. Ruffin, thank you for this. This is a great opportunity. Um, we have two middle school students, uh, two high school students, and uh, our middle school students really have shown the way up on that fourth floor. Um, so uh, they really lead up there keeping our recruitment. They work at keeping our students here going into ninth grade. They do a wonderful job, these two young ladies here. And um, one seventh grade, one eighth grade. So we like to start young, keep everybody here. We like when students come in sixth grade and stay till 12th grade. That's always our dream. And then we have uh, our two seniors graduating this year. We have our, our president, we have our uh, salutatorium. So uh, they really um, lead the students. And it's one thing to lead, but they don't leave anyone behind. And that's what's great about these four students. They do a wonderful job. Thank you so much. Thank you. Congratulations to the Waterbury Arts Magnet students. In the next school presenting is Waterbury Career Academy High School. The principal, Michael Harris, is here to recognize two students, Fatima Ali and Mary Jane Vasquez. Good evening, uh, President Sweeney, Vice President Hernandez, and Dr. Ruffin. Board of Ed Commissioners, thank you for having us tonight. It's with great pleasure that I can introduce our two recipients. Both uh, faces are familiar to you, but I'm gonna start with our 11th grade recipient, Mary Jane Vasquez. She's 11th grader in our Information Technology Academy. As you know, Mary Jane is a student member of the Board of Education, and she also serves on our uh, school student council. Mr. O'Toole, our advisor for student council, said that Mary Jane is an integral member of the student council and is very active in the planning and organizing of activities and initiatives at Waterbury Crew, uh, Career Academy. She truly is a pleasure to work with and she is a student of great character. Our 12th grade recipient is Fatima Ali. She is a student in our 12th grade health academy. Uh, like uh, Mary Jane, Fatima is a student member of the Board of Education and also serves on student council. Fatima is a very high achieving student currently enrolled in multiple UConn and AP courses. Mr. O'Toole said about Fatima, she is one of the smartest students I've ever had. She's caring and compassionate and truly a great person. Fatima will be taking everything she has with her educationally and her compassion she applied and she will be attending Harvard University in the fall. Congratulations again. The next school is pre presenting this evening is West Side Middle School. And representing the school, Principal Peter McCaslin and Assistant Principal Kathleen Ferrucci. And the students receiving honors this evening are Kehlani Dona Cimiento, Duvan Echeverria Pena. Good evening, everyone. Uh, President Sweeney, Honorable Commissioners, Dr. Ruffin, 
Uh, we have two awesome, awesome students that we are very happy to celebrate and highlight tonight. I'm going to turn that portion uh, of the uh, ceremony over to Mrs. Kathleen Ferrucci, who is our eighth grade house principal. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Our first recipient is Kalani Donna Cemento. At Westside, Kalani has demonstrated her outstanding abilities on her standardized testing. Kalani has maintained first honors during her entire three years at Westside. Kalani is a proud member of the National Junior Honor Society. Kalani is also athletic and is a member of the volleyball and softball teams. Kalani is a born leader who participated and represents Westside in community events. Kalani participates in the Granville Academy, which proves her commitment and willingness to work with others. Kalani is also active outside of Westside. Kalani's pastimes include arts and crafts and riding her bike. Congratulations, Kalani. Our next nominee is Duivan Pena Echeverria. At Westside, Duivan is a member of the eighth grade class. He exemplifies Westside's core values of pride, respect, integrity, trust, and honor. Duivan's positive attitude has carried over to his passion to help others. Duivan is the student advisor of Westside Student Council. Duivan leads by example and spearheads many initiatives in our school community. Duivan was the driving force behind the kindness campaign. He led staff and students to focus on using appropriate language, holding the door for others, and spreading kindness. Duivan challenged each grade to compete for the best behavior. He also led our Thanksgiving Day Drive, encouraging students to bring in canned goods for families in need. Duivan's leadership abilities are also evident in our Waterbury community. Duivan is a proud member of his church youth group and has dedicated his time to volunteering at NBL cheerleading competitions. Duivan accomplishes these tasks with great initiative and a positive attitude. Duivan demonstrates a commitment to education and is a resource for many peers. He is always respectful and willing to take on a challenge to ensure success. Congratulations. Congratulations again. And finally, uh, Wilby High School is here this evening and representing the team. We have Chair of the English Department, Lauren Franks Blanchard, and she is honoring two students, Gianni Bonval and Tenley Desalinas. Good evening, all. I just want to. Oh, there's Tenley. I just want to say that these two students that are next to me right now have proven themselves to be true leaders in my eyes and in the heart and home of Wilby High School. Both of these students, through their desire to help their peers, especially through the pandemic, and support their teachers and their community, have proven to be leaders. Tenley is a senior, um, and she is very soft-spoken, but she has that little dangerous edge to her that just, you can't mistake her quietness for weakness. She, um, during the pandemic, she never stopped thinking about what she can do for her school and her peers. And one of the things that I think that I admire about her as a leader the most is that she is a lifelong learner. And she proved that when she became a member of that robotics team and she helped to build a robot and she had no clue of what coding and all these things were. So that was amazing. And I think that that shows you Tenley as a wonderful leader and you're going to have a great future. And Gianni Bonvel, I met him as a freshman and Gianni came to me with a list of things that he would like to see happen at Wilby High School. And right then and there I said to myself, he needs to be part of student council and hmm, part of the GLI program. As a junior, he has reached out to students of all grade levels and he has earned the respect of his peers. 
as a participant in this year's school play, he has not only shown his, like he not only took command of that stage and showed leadership, but he also pro showed these kids that you can do whatever you set your mind to do, and it's okay to try and think outside the box. So I am so glad that these two have become recipients of this award, and I'm going to truly miss you, Tenley, and I'm gonna enjoy working with you for the next year, Johnny. Thank you. Congratulations again. And I'd just like to congratulate all of the students one more time and their families who are here this evening and are watching online. Can we give them all a round of applause again? And this concludes our CABE Awards. Thank you. I just want to add that each of the students received a certificate that states the Connecticut Association of Boards of Education awards the Student Leadership Award for Distinguished Leadership in School Activities and Daily Life, awarded this 12th day of April 2022. Congratulations, all. Um, I'd like to also congratulate all of the students and to, to just tell you how very proud I am. Uh, I think this is the largest group that we've ever had to be recognized for the CABE Leadership Award. It speaks volumes to what you're doing to fulfill the portrait of a graduate. I heard several of your teachers or counselors or principals speak to that and I'm just so very, very proud of you. Um, at least four of you are also members of the board's um, advisory, uh, and I think it, it is also a vision of what the school board has had to have student voice and to hear about student voice. So I want to commend you, and I want to thank your families and your principals and teachers, counselors for being here with you tonight. So if you are a parent of these wonderful students uh, or a relative who are here to celebrate the greatness that you have, uh, please stand and we want to thank you. The parents, yeah, the parents, please stand. The parents and families. Thank you. We have no public speakers tonight, so we will move to item eight, which is superintendent's announcements. Dr. Ruff. Thank you, President Sweeney, Vice President Hernandez, Secretary Serrano Adorno, members of the commissioners, it is my pleasure to share with you tonight some additional highlights in the district. The 2022 Waterbury Chapter of Unico National Scholarship recipients this year are from uh, WAMS, uh, Giuliano Dorso, who received recipient of the Marilyn A. Geraci Memorial Scholarship, and Julia Malin, who is a recipient of Maria Ann Poncello Torresano Memorial Scholarship. We're very proud of you. And from Kennedy High School, Damian Josephson, the Unico's Scholarship Leader Award. So congratulations to our wonderful students. We were earlier in the year able to celebrate um, the Channel 3 Kids Camp. Uh, this is a pilot program sought to identify 12 families, guardians with children, 
to attend a weekend respite camp at Channel 3 Kids Camp. This is a We're going to pause for a second until the excitement leaves the room. The Channel 3 Kids Camp event took place on April 30th this year. This was a collaborative between the Department of Children and Families in collaboration with the Police Chiefs Association Channel 3 Kids Camp, the Waterbury Police Development uh, Department, the, it's the Waterbury um, Police Athletic League the Waterbury School Board and Juvenile Probation worked together for the past several months uh, to outline uh, an outstanding program that would be supportive of families. And so we were very pleased to have 12 families along with their guardians participate at this Channel 3 Kids Camp. And we hope that this will be a continued endeavor and partnership. Early college high school students visited post-university Vice Principal Sean Mosley from Early College High and the students visited POST for a tour and to receive information. The POST staff welcomed and greeted the students of Early College High. One of the reasons for this particular visit was these students will actually get an opportunity to attend POST University on campus next year, so they were actually visiting their next school site. Uh, we have 20 students in this particular cohort who will be participating in post-secondary classes at Post University, working towards accruing credits, which will potentially lead to an associate's degree in an additional two years. This is our first class to attend Post University on campus, um, and, uh, and next year's cohort is a class of 40, and the year after that is even larger. So early college high school is designed for students beginning in their junior year to have an opportunity to have in school, on campus experiences at the post-secondary level. We're very pleased that our students were able to do this. The next slide uh, shares with you all of the graduation dates. Yeah, I know those have been sent to our commissioners. We'll continue to send and post those on our website. And we want to make certain that we're out to celebrate all of our graduates this year. You will see that for the first time in, in over two years, we're actually able to have graduation ceremonies closer to the sites that are closest to the students and their families. And uh, in, in uh, certainly, you know, in most, if not all of these cases, to really have an, uh, an audience to celebrate the children in a way that's going to make the families very happy of this great achievement. The next presentation is, while part of the superintendent's report is going to be conducted by Mr. Raj Macfour, he is going to share with our commissioners all of the projects that are currently underway or expected to be underway. Uh, as part of this first phase. So the, this will be an update on the construction projects uh, at this time. And Mr. McVore, if you'd like to take that presentation from here. Following Mr. McVore's presentation, our um, 
Deputy Superintendent is going to present the COVID-19 updates, and that will then conclude the superintendent's report. Good evening, President Sweeney, Vice President Hernandez, Secretary Serrano Adorno, Board of Ed Commissioners, our Superintendent Dr. Robbins, thanks for having us tonight. I'm here this evening to share with the board the list of the construction project that we're currently working on, uh, working on as part of ESSER, our ESSER, or capital project. These projects, among other projects, have been identified and cataloged as priority one and two in SLAM FCA reports. I just want to point out that some of these projects are in design phase, other projects are in RFP, RFP phase, contract phase, and others, are, and others are set to start this summer. So the project listed in item one through four, which is Walsh border replacements, Maloney chair replacement, Kingsbury border replacement, and BMS building upgrades. This is set to start uh, in the summer of 2022 and fall of 2022. Items listed on the, item listed on the, from number five through number eight are in design, are in bid phase. We have Kennedy exhaust fans, replacing about 41 exhaust fans. Crosby cooling tower replacements, will be air handle replacements, and tinker border replacements. Items from 9 through 15 are in the design phase. So these are the HVAC upgrades in the old grammar schools. We have the building management system upgrades, international school border replacements, Rotella border replacements, exhaust fan replacement in the grammar schools. We have uh, uh, rooftop unit replacement at Duggan and Gilmartin. Um, item 16 through 18 are in uh, the planning phase. We have done the Palace Theater split. We have in handle replacements at various schools and core replacement at various schools. The second page, I don't know if you can see it from here, it's the playground upgrades. We will be replacing 10, we, we, we will be replacing eight playscapes, Bunker Hill, Chase, Drix, Holfield, Regan, Rotala, and Spake School, and Washington. Then the next category is for the auditorium upgrade at Crosby, Wallace, Willby, North End, Kennedy, and Westside, and we are in the, the process of getting a contract with Friar Architect. The other category we have in the ARP ESSER and ESSER project is uh, FFNE. Um, Classroom furniture, we just opened up the bid uh, last week. And we're also working on um, getting furniture for the media center and the principal's need and request for equipment. Uh, we earmarked about $7 million for, this, for these uh, furniture, for the furniture. <laughs> the last category is a capital project. We have generally roof replacement, which started in, uh, in over the break. And the rest of the school is uh, set to uh, be completed by the summer of 2022. We're also working on Bunker Hill and Washington elevator addition in the design phase. Uh, item 26 and 27, we're in planning phase for the elevator addition at uh, Driggs, Generali, Tinker, and Wilson. And also we're in planning phase for roof replacement project at Kennedy, Sprague, and Tinker. With that, I conclude my presentation. And if the commissioners have any questions, we won't have to answer. Commissioner Brown. Yes, good evening, Roger. Good Thank evening. Thank you for the presentation. I had Two questions. <clears throat> uh, we do have the Good Jobs Ordinance in Waterbury. I'm sure you're familiar with yes. that. Are we bundling some of these projects, say all the boilers can go together because the threshold is $500,000. So I, I'm thinking that they all should try to come under the Good Jobs. But if, uh, they're, if they're being bid individually, some of them may come under. So is it, and for economy of scale, are we bidding as a bundle? That's a good question, Commissioner. We're bidding them as a package. So all the border will go under one package, the exhaust panel will go under one package, Perfect. and it's, it's definitely going to be over $500,000, which is subject to good jobs. Okay, thank you. Yeah, and we engage um, Northwest Regional Workforce for this. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions? Commissioner Padano? Any questions? No. Okay. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Raj. Thank you. We plan on, on sharing these updates with you regularly. 
Commissioner Sweeney, just one question to Dr. Ruffin. I know we, I thought the state budget included some bonding money for HVAC. Is that in the works, or we're not sure yet? So, certain things will periodically come out, but the, sometimes there are some stipulations. Some things make us eligible, some things do not. So we're paying very close attention to that in right. case we have to shift funding that we'll be ready to we Get to some do extra that. money. Yes. <laughs> Great, yeah. thank you. Hi, good evening. President Sweeney, Vice President Hernandez, Board of Education Commissioners, our student representatives, and Dr. Ruffin. Tonight I have a few numbers to update you on the COVID metrics. The first slide um, goes from late, uh, I believe that's supposed to be February 27th to April 2nd. Uh, the second set of uh, numbers are from early April to late April, and the last set is the last two weeks. And these are the staff number of positives. So you can see uh, starting in March, by week three, one, one, nine, six. Early April started getting up into um, early teens, uh, 12, 11, 4, 15. Week of break was, was low. The last two weeks, spiked up to 26 and now 40 uh, as of last week for the number of staff positives. Student data over time, which there's this nice video on the bottom blocking you from the la most recent pieces of data. There we go. Move that out of the way. Thank you. Student data over time, as you can see, just the, the line graph itself, we're not nearly where we were um, earlier in the year, but it's um, the spike is is, is happening, but not as not as severe as what we once experienced. You can see the positive students um, over the last few days, 48 coming off of um, an outbreak at one of proms. Uh, we have quarantine students uh, going ranging from 22 to 13 over the last week. The local data you're very familiar with, with the three indicators. Um, this was uh, every week from, Febu uh, from February 17th to April 7th. Um, we hit that green. Uh, I know we were excited, but uh, this curve seems to be going back up as of the last two weeks, and um, we're back to having 21.4 per 100,000 new cases, and the vaccine prevalence still is very low, uh, much lower than what we would like in the community. Uh, this is also something that's became somewhat new near the end of the last time we talked, which is the COVID metric data by community. This is really what most communities are going off of now. Um, I put the link at the bottom here, so hopefully you have access to this. If not, I can send it to you. And um, you can click on that community uh, levels of transmission. Right now we are high. Uh, we are one of six com uh, counties that are high in Connecticut. And um, that's based on the transmission and the local data. So um, it's based on new cases, deaths, and testing numbers. And so uh, that's where we're testing now. Uh, that's the most recent data that we have. I'm happy to answer any questions that I can possibly take. And I know that Mr. Mendoza um, is, a, is the expert at this point in terms of the staff data. And uh, Will Zuda is also working with our student data. Anyone have any questions for Darren? Okay, so we'll, we'll continue to revisit this as we get our students through the end of the school year. Um, I wanted to be sure that we got this information out in public so that um, parents and students and staff um, can make decisions in their best interests. Uh, so I want to keep on this. So we'll see you in Some. two weeks. Sounds good. Masks are still optional for, for, yep. for students and staff moving forward, still up to the, the, the individual families and students to make those decisions. And we did put in some protocols for large gatherings like proms and graduations uh, where students will all be given tests prior to um, and after uh, going to the event so that they can remove themselves. We're not going to monitor it. We're going to ask them to take it and remove themselves from the event if they test positive. So we've also put that in place just for the community.
based on what happened at one of the events, we're gonna we're gonna see we're gonna have them test before and after. Okay. Thank you, Commissioner Harsaw. Darren, I, I know when I was I, I visited Wendell Cross, uh, it seemed like a lot of the students were wearing masks. How is it throughout the whole? System. I, I, do you see a lot of people in, in schools wearing a mask, or is it 20 percent? I, I, I don't. I'm not, I would hate to put a number to it. I don't think it's as high as it was right when we went off of the optional. Um, I think when we right when we went off to the optional, it was pretty high. It was even above 50 percent. I think when we walked through most of the most <coughs> of the schools. But I actually was just at Wendell Cross, happened to be there last week, and very few students had it on. Um, I know I actually was in the lunch room, and I think I saw maybe six students with a mask and so um, anecdotally I think it's the mask wearing has gone down a little bit especially as it's getting warmer um, but it's it's you know with the rates rising I'm sure families will start opting to uh, certain families will start opting to put them back on thank you and that's, that's my hope at this point that that the community and parents and students and staff will will look at the numbers themselves and make those decisions for themselves. Okay. okay. Thank you Thank very you. much. Thanks. Thank item, you, Mr. Schwartz. Okay. Item number nine is President's con comments. I um, want to introduce our two student reps tonight. Uh, Danea Gray, excuse me if I say it incorrectly and Diana Suknath, and uh, both from Kennedy High, correct? Okay, and for myself, I just want to um, remind everyone that um, we are going back to Thursday night rotation. Um, we've had some challenges um, for some of our uh, commissioners to adjust schedules. Um, I hope that it, at some point we could look at it again, maybe for the, the next calendar year, um, if schedules allow it. Uh, all meetings now will start at 5.30, so workshops and regular meetings will start at 5.30, um, and that's beginning with our next meeting, okay? And that's all that I have for today. Okay, so we will move to the consent calendar. Does anyone want to wish? Did I miss it? I did. I apologize. Our student representative comments. Um, who would like to start? I will. Okay. Good evening, President Sweeney, Vice President Hernandez, Secretary Serrano Adorno, Commissioners, and Dr. Ruffin. My name is Diana Suknoth, representing John F. Kennedy High School, and I am currently in the 12th grade. Currently at Kennedy, we just finished our AP testing. Overall, 108 students enrolled in AP classes and 199 AP tests were completed. The senior class has hosted events to raise money in order to make the year memorable. Can you so, pull the microphone a little closer sorry. so we can hear you? Some events that they hosted were the Trivia Night event, the Bingo Night event, Family Feud, and the Senior Sunrise at the beginning of the year. We've also had an event where we filmed for the Senior Video, which is an annual compilation of skits and recordings from events throughout the year. This Senior Video is unique to Kennedy and it's one of the um, one of the things that caused the most excitement for the students, especially the seniors. We will be watching the senior video at our Kennedy Cinema event at, on June 9th. The senior car wash a few weeks ago, which, which raised close to $800, will be going to some of our senior night events this Friday. Our, plum, our prom was last Friday at La Bella Vista. 270 students attended, and the staff from La Bella Vista complimented the behavior of the students, saying we were some of the most well-behaved students they have ever hosted. Some upcoming events happening is the College Acceptance Day on May, on May 26th and the National Honor Society induction sometime later this month. We will also be having the annual awards night ceremony on June 1st in our senior sunset. Thank you. Thank you. And, and your grade? What grade are you in? I'm in 12th grade. So you're graduating this year. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. All right. Good evening, President Sweeney, Vice President Hernandez, Secretary Serrano Adorno, Commissioners, and Dr. Ruffin. My name is Dania Gray, representing John F. Kennedy, and I am in 11th grade. And I will be listing some of the accomplishments I think are, that, that deserve to be you know, like heard based on our school. And in March, three students were recognized for placing in the CT DECA state. 
championship while one student was recognized for placing fifth in restaurant and food service management, and two others were recognized for placing sixth in buying and merchandising. In the poetry contest, where students recite poems in different languages, 13 were meddled out of the 16 who participated. In, for Kennedy's journalism class, uh, they, they became finalists for American Scholastic Press Association Awards and New England Scholastic Press Journalism Awards. And the junior class had even more events, events planned for us this year, such as trips to amusement parks and college-related events. And an upcoming one is with UConn, where all students are welcome to attend, even though it is mainly focused on juniors. And this event was sponsored by Kennedy's school counselor team. And we have some recognitions for sports, such as golf. The Waterbury Co-op team at Kennedy, who won the Stigberg Memorial Golf Tournament. We have track has 22 members on the team who qualified for the state open meet track, open track meet. The softball team will be honoring its seniors during senior nights this upcoming Thursday. And the numbers in the girls tennis team has increased as well as the overall skill. So, that's all. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions for our student representative? Any questions for the board members? Not any right now. No. Well, thank you very much for your participation tonight and for being here and for serving as student representatives to the board. We appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. So now, does anyone wish to remove an item from the consent calendar? Okay. Consent calendar. Item 11.1, .1, Committee on Finance, request approval of professional services contract with Facility Support Services, LLC, for on-call environmental services and AHERA inspections. 11.2, Committee on Finance, request approval of a construction contract with SNA Building Systems Incorporated for building management system upgrades and ventilation controller replacement of various schools. 11.3, Committee on Finance, request approval to apply for the Connecticut State Department of Education CTE Secondary Supplemental Enhancement Grant 2022. 11.4, Committee on Finance, request approval of CSDE Supplemental Grant Application for Adult Education Cooperating Eligible Entity Literacy Volunteers of Greater Waterbury. Committee on Finance, request approval of a contract with Water, Greater Waterbury YMCA for a summer day camp program at Camp Natasha. 11.6, Committee on Finance, request approval of a contract with Waterbury Police Activity League for a summer basketball program at PALS facility. 11.7, Committee on Finance, request approval of a professional services agreement with Connecticut Junior Republic Association Incorporated for SAFE program and school-based clinic program. Committee on Finance, request approval of a transfer in the 2021-2022 fiscal year budget. 11.9, Committee on Building and School Facilities, use of school facilities by school organizations and or city departments and Committee on Building and School Facilities, use of school facilities by outside organizations and or waiver request. Commissioner Van Stone. Madam President, uh, a motion to approve the consent calendar items 11.1 .1 through 11.10. Second. Motion's been made and seconded. Any discussion? <coughs> Roll call. Brown? Yes. Vice President Hernandez? Yes. Commissioner Ireland? Yes. Commissioner Nardozzi? Yes. Commissioner O'Brien? Yes. Commissioner Orso? Yes. Commissioner Pagano? Yes. Commissioner Serrano? Yes. <laughs> Commissioner Van Stone? Yes. President Sweeney? Yes. Motion carries. Okay. Item 13.1. Vice President Hernandez. Oh. 
ladies and gentlemen, the committee of the whole moves that the Waterbury Board of Education approve a donor gift agreement with Waterbury Promise Incorporated as submitted by Michael LeBlanc, Director of Finance. Motion's been made and seconded. Mr. LeBlanc is here to fill us in on this one. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, good, evening, good evening, everyone. It's nice to be with you. Uh, we have submitted before you a uh, donor gift, gift, gift agreement with Waterbury Promise. Um, I'm sure you're all familiar with the, the history and uh, uh, what's uh, the really good program that's been established and is now uh, in a position to be funded from the standpoint of the transfer of funds uh, to date. Uh, there has been 2250000 that has been approved. Uh, for a gift contribution uh, by, uh, in combination with support from the Waterbury Board of Education and from the uh, city's uh, Board of Aldermen. Um, the agreement that's included uh, establishes the framework under which uh, the funds will be dispersed. Uh, they will be dispersed to Waterbury Promise, which is a newly established uh, separate nonprofit organization. Uh, the funds themselves will be under the custody of the Connecticut Community Foundation. Uh, they have the, the accounting infrastructure in place uh, to handle the, the accounting and associated reporting. Uh, they will also be the agency that will handle uh, the distribution and award uh, of the uh, scholarships um, that are coming about as we speak. Um, I have with me uh, this evening uh, Sarah Gary. Uh, she is uh, the city's manager of budget development and oversight. Uh, her role in this process uh, is essentially to certify uh, when the funds have been approved by uh, either of the boards and uh, uh, at that point in time confirm that it would be okay for the city to then uh, disperse the funds uh, to the organization. Um, it, I've heard that uh, the program itself is already off to a great start with uh, over 100 scholarships that uh, have been awarded or in the process of being awarded uh, for the graduating seniors and uh, I certainly would encourage you as as time passes uh, to uh, invite the new executive director of Waterbury Promise uh, to come before your board uh, to provide you with uh, uh, some program uh, updates on how things are going uh, but it's off to a, a really good start um, and the other component of the agreement uh, as it's established is with your approval uh, in the Board of Aldermen's approval, we will not only have the, the authorization uh, to transfer uh, the prior funds uh, that have been approved, the 2250000 but also uh, additional gift contributions that we anticipate uh, will be approved in, uh, in the years ahead. Uh, with that, I'll uh, I'd certainly be happy to take any questions. Commissioner Brown? Uh, thank you, Mr. LeBanc. I just had a question in terms of uh, contributions are uh, individuals allowed to uh, donate to this fund or organizations or uh, businesses or is it just the Board of Aldermen and the Board of Education no uh, absolutely uh, uh, private contributions will be more than welcomed uh, I do know that uh, there's been one significant private contribution that I'm aware of that's been made to date uh, from Cigna wow. um, and uh, it's a multi-year contribution, I think, in total, uh, representing $500,000. Um, and um, I would, you know, again, so certainly private and uh, corporate contributions are, are certainly more than welcomed. Um, I'm not sure, though, at this point in time, as far as the overall process that will uh, uh, exist or come about from the standpoint of those contributions um, going directly to CCF. Um, it, uh, the only contributions that will funnel through uh, the cities in the Board of Education books, if you will, will be those contributions that uh, the boards approve. But uh, uh, certainly, uh, you know, on behalf of Waterbury Promise and, and certainly their executive director, um, it would be great if uh, uh, certainly uh, private, additional private contributions can be uh, sought after. Uh, it will certainly help uh, uh, establish the foundation of the program for many, many years to come. Thank you. It's certainly a milestone. I'm, I'm very excited. I think we all are very excited about this opportunity and all the work I'm sure that went into it. So thanks to everybody who made this possible. Yeah. 
certainly and, and you know on behalf of Mayor O'Leary I know he's been a, a big champion and, and supporter and, and heavily involved in the process with uh, uh, the establishment of Waterbury Promise uh, and you know certainly the cooperative effort with this Board of Education and Dr. Ruffin so very very good thing. Commissioner Arsa? My quick question, who is the executive director? Uh, I was afraid you were going to ask that. So Sorry, her, uh, <laughs> I can give you her first name. Her first that name is, is Kilanda. Kilanda. Thanks, Mike. You bet. <laughs> she did that on purpose, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions for Mr. LeBlanc? Okay. All right. Hearing none. Roll call. Brown. Thank you. Yes. Vice President Hernandez. Yes. Commissioner Ireland. Yes. Commissioner Nardozzi. Yes. Commissioner O'Brien. Yes. Commissioner Orso. Yes. Commissioner Pagano. Yes. Commissioner Serrano Adorno. Commissioner Van Stone? Yes. President Sweeney? Yes. The motion carries. Okay. Item 14, Committee on Finance. Uh, item 14.1, Commissioner Orso. Thank you, Madam President. 14.1, the Committee on Finance moves <coughs> that the Waterbury Board of Education approve a professional services agreement with the Boys and Girls Club of Greater Waterbury Incorporated to provide boys and girls club swimmer, so I'm sorry, <laughs> summer enrichment program subject to any non-substantive changes approved by the Corporation Council's office. <laughs> First day with the new eyes. Motion been made and seconded. Any discussion? Any questions? No? Okay. Roll call. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Vice President Hernandez? Yes. Commissioner Ireland? Yes. Commissioner Nardozzi? Yes. Commissioner O'Brien? Yes. Commissioner Orso? Yes. Commissioner Pagano? Yes. Commissioner Serrano Adorno? Yes. Commissioner Van Stone? Yes. President Sweeney? Yes. Commissioner Orso, item 14.2. 14.2. The Committee on Finance moves that the Waterbury Board of Education approve a professional services agreement with Stanley Convergence Security Solutions, Inc. for monitoring and servicing of school security systems at various schools. This agreement replaces the agreement previously approved by the board at its April 26, 2022 meeting. Second. Motion's been made and seconded. Any discussion? Vice President Hernandez? Here's the answer. Yep. Rush. Okay. It's a really quick one, Rush. Um, why are we redoing it? Stanley Conversion Council requested a change to Section 8.1 indemnification changes, and our Corporation Council approved those changes. That's why we're back again asking for your approval. Oh, okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions? <laughs> Roll call. Thank you. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Vice President Hernandez? Yes. Commissioner Ireland? Yes. Commissioner Nardozzi? Yes. Commissioner O'Brien? Yes. Commissioner Orso? Yes. Commissioner Pagano? Yes. Commissioner Serrano Adorno? Commissioner Van Stone? Yes. President Sweeney? Yes. Motion passes. Commissioner Orso, item 14.3. Item 14.3, the Committee on Finance moves that the Waterbury Board of Education approve an agreement with the Greater Waterbury Young Men's Christmas Association, YMCA, to provide summer day camp program at Camp Watasha for students enrolled in 21st century and SDE after school programs subject to any non-substantive changes approved by the Corporation Council's office. Second. Motion's been made and seconded. Any discussion? Anyone have questions? Commissioner Ireland. Yes, thank you. Just a quick question. I just wanted to know why, is there a reason why lunch wasn't provided? I saw that transportation was provided. Can, would you be able to answer that? Hi, uh, good evening again. I didn't hear the question. I'm sorry. Um, just looking over the documents, I was just questioning how come, why wasn't there lunch 
provided? I saw that there was transportation. Is there a reason why lunch wasn't provided? I'm fairly certain lunch is provided. I can't with Tasha, but I can I can get that information for you and certainly email um, Carrie to get that out to the board. Okay, I think I was just reading where I saw it said that the children had to provide their own snacks and lunch. Yeah, I, I can look into that and get an answer for, for the group tonight um, because typically we we have summer feeding sites as well. And so I can I can work on that even if it's if it's not a summer feeding site, which it isn't usually in our schools, um, we can certainly look into that and figure something out if that's the case. Thank you. Anyone else? Seeing none, roll call. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Vice President Hernandez? Yes. Commissioner Ireland? Yes. Commissioner Nardozzi? Yes. Commissioner O'Brien? Yes. Commissioner Orsa? Yes. Commissioner Pagano? Yes. Commissioner Serrano Adorno? Yes. Commissioner Van Stone? Yes. President Sweeney? Yes. Okay. Commissioner Orso, item 14.4. 14.4. The Committee on Finance moves that the Waterbury Board of Education approve a professional services agreement with Ion Bank Foundation Incorporated for a school banking partnership for Crosby High School at no cost, subject to any non-substantive changes approved by the Corporation Council's office. Second. Motion's been made and seconded. Any discussion? Questions? Commissioner Orso? Just a comment. I, I think this is a very good thing if anybody they're going to put a bank right in Crosby and for kids to learn how to do the checking account and, and, and just, I think it's a great program. I really do. And it's no cost. That's the best part. <laughs> Vice President Hernandez. Darren, do we have any idea where this is going to be set up and how it's going to run? We do. Uh, so <laughs> it, it's going to, the school store will be renovated to be the bank. Um, ION will cover all the costs for the renovation of that space. Uh, in that bank, we would be selecting approximately 10 students a year to actually be tellers in the bank. Uh, it would run on Tuesdays and Thursdays from about 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. It'd be open for any of the students or staff um, at Crosby. And um, students would receive, uh, if approved tonight, we would, uh, we, would, we would also give the students a credit in um, internship as well. Uh, so they'd get an additional credit and in internship uh, that we have already on the books for uh, students to be able to get that through interns. Um, there's an application uh, that students would have to fill out to be one of those 10. There'd be an interview process and required summer training. And we'd be looking for students specifically in, in the accounting, marketing, and money management uh, strand at Crosby. Are they getting paid? So there is opportunity to get paid possibly in summer work that they'll be offering during the year through the credit work. That, that would be a, a non-paid work experience for them. Okay. Thank you. Gary, Any, didn't we have a program a couple of years ago, Kathy Awad helped set up that, and the kids loved it. They, a lot of yeah, them got was, jobs. And, yeah, yeah. Yep, there was a program uh, that was uh, similar, uh, not a, a bank coming in and creating a whole space, but um, it would it is actually in line with what Mike Maradi has set up there at Crosby in terms of that strand, and I believe that has incorporated That's great. that has incorporated actually what Kathy has done that continues to to happen at Crosby. Should be happy. <laughs> no, it continues. I, I'm pretty sure she connected with Mike on that. <laughs> Thank you. Any other questions? No. Nope. I'm good. Thank you. Roll call. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Vice President Hernandez? Yes. Commissioner Ireland? Yes. Commissioner Nardozzi? Yes. Commissioner O'Brien? Yes. Commissioner Orso? Yes. Commissioner Pagano? Yes. Commissioner Serrano Adorno? Yes. Commissioner Van Stone? Yes. President Sweeney? Yes. Item 14.5. Commissioner Marcello. No. The Committee on Finance moves that the Waterbury Board of Education approve to apply for the Nellie May Educational Foundation Advancing Community School Participant par par Partnerships Grant. Second. 
Motion's been made and seconded. Any discussion? Darren, you just want to run through this one? Sure. I want to thank uh, it, uh, Dr. Ruffin for bringing this to our attention and Dr. White, who worked really hard on getting this in with, with a, a short amount of time. This is a three-year grant for $740,000 uh, to apply for the Nellie May grant. This would allow um, the Waterbury Public Schools to design a project to address the need for uh, black, indigenous, and persons of color uh, for to, to, to be teachers in the district, specifically Hispanic, Latinx, and bilingual teachers for the Waterbury Public Schools. Uh, Waterbury Public Schools and the Hispanic Coalition will collaborate to provide a teacher recruitment preparation program designed to reduce the lack of diversity and representation in the educator workforce. Um, there's some more paragraphs there about how they'll That's go about great. doing it, uh, but it's a uh, uh, a grant that was, uh, it's a three-year grant. It was only opened up to a certain uh, number of communities, a very select few. So we have a great chance to, to get this one crossing our fingers. Uh, we have a great grant writer, so I'm sure she'll pull it off. <laughs> and she's watching now, so she always does. She'll, she'll text me after. And, and there's no monetary match on this one? We're going to do in-kind? No in monetary. Services? It's in-kind only. Yeah, no monetary in match. In-kind only. Any other questions? Roll call. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Vice President Hernandez? Yes. Commissioner Ireland? Yes. Commissioner Nardozzi? Yes. Commissioner O'Brien? Yes. Commissioner Orso? Yes. Commissioner Pagano? Yes. Commissioner Serrano Adorno? Yes. Commissioner Van Stone? Yes. President Sweeney? Yes. Item number 15, superintendent's notification to the board. Commissioner Pagano for the motion. Madam President, I motion to receive and place on file the superintendent's notification to the board. Items 15.1 through 15.5. Motion's been made and seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, roll call. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Vice President Hernandez? Yes. Commissioner Ireland? Yes. Commissioner Nardozzi? Yes. Commissioner O'Brien? Yes. Commissioner Orso? Yes. Commissioner Pagano? Yes. Commissioner Serrano Adorno? Yes. Commissioner Van Stone? Yes. President Sweeney? Yes. And that concludes our calendar for tonight. So, um, a motion to adjourn? I make a motion that we adjourn. Second. <laughs> we don't know call. Roll call for this one. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, abstain. Motion carries. We are adjourned. Good night, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Recording stopped.